Don't know Charlie Palmer Steak? Its involvement in Steakgate? How it was started with the intent to be more inclusive than other steakhouses? Once you know the details, you may seek out your nearest location. In a small dairy farming town in upstate New York called Smyrna, a young Charlie Palmer realized his love for farm fresh food. Having an appreciation for agriculture instilled in him as a child strongly influenced him as a chef. Palmer knew he wanted to be a chef as young as 15 years old. He started working in restaurants in high school as a dishwasher and eventually a prep cook. Palmer also enrolled in his high school's home economics class on a dare. How did she sell you on this? Uh, yeah, well, she said, look, look, look you, can, you can cook anything you want. You can eat anything you cook. Ah, that's it. And it'll be you and 26 <laughs> girls. Given his upbringing, it's no surprise that Palmer was one of the first advocates for farm-to-table dining. In 1988, Palmer decided to craft menus that spotlighted regionally sourced ingredients. It was a pioneering decision. It would be a long time before such practices were adopted by the broader restaurant industry. Palmer's ingenuity paid off. His critically acclaimed New York restaurant Oriole earned 13 Michelin stars and two James Beard awards in its 30-year history. You don't get as far as Charlie Palmer has in his roughly 40-year-old culinary career without possessing a flair for innovation. Starting with his signature progressive American cuisine, Palmer has been a trailblazer in the restaurant industry since he was made River Cafe's executive chef in 1983. Palmer has said the key to his entrepreneurial success was his ability to look forward and see how to improve on what he's done before, and to never do the same thing twice. That talent has certainly come in handy during the pandemic. After shutting down the brick-and-mortar operations of his Oriole restaurant location, Palmer rebranded it to Oriole at Home. It's a customized home dining service that boasts high-end takeout and a specialty wine list and cocktails. While Palmer admitted to Zagat it wasn't a money-making machine, it was the right thing to do to keep staff members employed. Palmer also said his restaurant business has capitalized on outdoor dining mandates and to go alcohol during COVID-19. Unfortunately, it looks like the Oreo brand is gone for good at that location and has been replaced with another Palmer restaurant, Charlie Palmer Steak. An established player in the restaurant industry, it should come as no surprise that young chefs have flocked to Charlie Palmer's restaurants to study under the award-winning restaurateur's tutelage. The owners of barbecue hotspot Ruthie's All Day, Matt Hill and Todd Salvador, first met when they worked together at Charlie Palmer Steak's DC location. Palmer also mentored Brian Valtaggio and Michael Mina, who both went on to launch their own restaurant groups. Nurturing the next generation of chefs and restaurant trailblazers is a crucial aspect of Palmer's entrepreneurial spirit. The chef has said that one of the most rewarding aspects of running the Charlie Palmer Group is seeing his interns work their way through the ranks to achieve jobs as chefs and business owners. He feels like he's doing his job right if they succeed. Palmer views the entrepreneurial spirit of former employees less as competition and more as extensions of his success. A graduate of the prestigious Culinary Institute of America, Palmer also encourages young chefs with internship opportunities through his alma mater. Young chefs aren't the only ones Charlie Palmer has influenced throughout his career. The award-winning chef and restaurateur has passed the chef's hat to his youngest son, Reed, who recently graduated from Cornell. As Palmer worked to reopen his DC location and his New York rooftop after the pandemic, Reed pitched in to help. Palmer's love for sharing cooking with his family had a strong influence on Reed as a child. Oh wow, I actually really love this, you know, not just because my dad is in it, because, but I have a genuine interest for it. Family and food have always been inextricably linked for Palmer, whose cookbook, Charlie Palmer's American Fair, Everyday Recipes from My Kitchens to Yours, includes a chapter dedicated to family favorite recipes. Included is a recipe called Reed's Bruschetta, an appetizer inspired by his son's dislike for raw tomatoes. Historically, steakhouses have been male-dominated venues that didn't start to open up to women until around the 1920s, when women got the right to vote. But even if women were technically allowed in chop houses, that didn't mean they necessarily felt welcomed. That's why Charlie Palmer sought to build a new kind of steakhouse where women could feel comfortable too. He didn't want the restaurant to be a boys' club. This ambition is reflected in the steakhouse design, which favors a neutral color palette and bright lighting. It replaces the traditional fixtures of men's clubs, such as dark wood and dim lighting. Palmer also set out to empower diners with choices beyond steak. This is especially relevant since modern Americans have started to consume less and less red meat. Plus, the menu at Charlie Palmer Steaks makes it easier for diners to mix and match dishes, which ensures everyone is satisfied by the time the check arrives. In an interview with Grub Street, Otavia Bouchard-Bourdain, then wife of the late Anthony Bourdain, called the recent steak she had eaten in Las Vegas an abomination. This remark caused quite the frenzy, as reporters put on their Sherlock Holmes caps to try and deduce which restaurant was responsible. John Curtis, a columnist at Eating Las Vegas, posited a guess. Carnivino, a well-known steakhouse in Sin City. True to form, Bourdain fired back on Twitter. Bouja Bourdain spoke up too, but was comparatively kinder as she explained that she avoided naming names to spare the steakhouse any undue embarrassment. Eventually, Charlie Palmer admitted his restaurant was behind the maligned steak and also offered his apologies to Bouja Bourdain. 
ever the classy guy, Palmer said he decided to come forward before any more of his colleagues were implicated. Palmer also said it was unfortunate he had to hear about the incident afterward. It made it impossible to figure out what exactly happened behind the scenes to render the steak inedible. Given that the chef and entrepreneur resides in Northern California's wine country, it should come as no surprise that Palmer's restaurants, including his steakhouses, feature an extensive selection of wines. The Napa location of Charlie Palmer Steak boasts a wine list with 400 options. While the list includes wine staples like Cabernet, Champagne, and Burgundy, it also spotlights wines for those feeling more adventurous, like Arnais and Grunou Veltliner. In addition to wine, Charlie Palmer Steak offers craft cocktails that are bound to impress even the most discerning of taste buds. The steakhouse wowed brunch-goers with its rolling Bloody Mary and mimosa cart. This ingenious concept caters unlimited cocktails straight to diners' tables, ensuring no one sees the bottom of their glass. The cart includes several options that put a new spin on old cocktail classics. Some examples include the pomegranate and currant mimosa and the so-called Super Juice Bloody Mary, which mixes carrot and ginger with pickled carrots and cornichons. As if there wasn't enough already to like about Charlie Palmer steak, the chain of luxury chop houses also has another feature to entice diners — a secret menu. And not only is it delicious, at $58 per person, it's also a bargain considering all that's included. So how do you take advantage of the secret menu? All you have to do is ask your server for the cut of the week. Don't be fooled by the name. The secret menu isn't just a single item but a whole three-course dinner, including a salad, entree, side dishes, and dessert. The menu is seasonal and rotates weekly, and it's only available to people who dine in person at one of the steakhouse's restaurant locations. In the past, the secret menu has spotlighted a Thai salad to start, a petite ribeye, sides of cauliflower fried rice and sweet corn, and sorbet for dessert. The secret menu also includes unlimited wine pairings. You definitely can't go wrong here! Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more MASH videos about your favorite chefs are coming soon! Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one!